Uh, I'd like to call to order the Village of Oxford Planning Commission. I'd like to pay respect to the flag. Could you speak up, please? I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Are the mics working tonight? Yep. Okay. Can we have a roll call for tonight, please? Justin Valor is absent. Scott Flynn. Here. CJ Gosdor. Here. Maureen Hel Helba is absent. John Roll. Here. Wilson Here. Tom Schultz. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, approval of the agenda from June 18, 2024. Make a motion to approve the agenda of June 18, 2024. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Thank you. Approval of the minutes for May 7th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes dated May 7th, 2024. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Thank you. Tonight we're going to have two public hearings. Uh, there'll be two separate hearings. Uh, I'm going to ask Joe Medor to give an introduction to each one of those. Uh, the, we'll, we'll open up with a public hearing. The public is more than welcome to come up and talk. We'll have a three minute timer on the uh, people addressing the board and then they will have an opportunity to give their name and their address. Uh, we'll close the public hearing, and then the results of the public hearing will be handled under our new business later in the meeting. So public hearing, item A, special usage sign pursuant to zoning ordinance section 7.4.8F 2B, 51 South Washington Street, maximum surface display on, or on the projecting wall sign. Joe, if you want to give a summary of that. Uh, yeah, before we open up the public hearing, um, if you recall, some of the planning commissioners not all were here last month when, or last meeting we had, is when uh, they applied for a projecting sign, which the ordinance allows for a maximum of 16 square feet, and they uh, presented us with an option to approve the 23 square feet, I think it was. Um, obviously outside the bounds of the normal approval, so they were gonna have to go back to the drawing board and apply for special use approval. Mario had pulled up on the screen at that time um, showing the previous signage from 5-1 Diner that was up there, which was even considerably more square footage than what they were requesting. Um, but it's that reason that they are back at us now in front of us uh, with a special use request. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing to address this topic. Do I have a motion? I have a motion to open the public hearing at 7.03. Second. Second. The motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is open. And from the community, I'd like to come up and discuss the topic in regards to the wall projected sign. I see no one. I'd like to close the public hearing at 7.03. I have a motion. Make a motion to close public hearing specific to the special use sign agenda item. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you guys saying? You're, you're saying that this Washington tree thing is over and done with? Hmm? What did you guys say? We closed the special use sign agenda item for public comment. The board will now move to open public comment on the conditional rezoning for Washington Triangle. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now I can hear you. I'd like to. Joe, I'd uh, Mr. Medor, I'd like you to present uh, a synopsis of the conditional rezoning of Washington Triangle Park, Triangle, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Okay. And uh, you recall, I think it was the last planning commission meeting, I got something like the day before the meeting, I kind of just shared you with the documents that are in front of you, the large format documents, talk about the plan that may be coming before you in the uh, near future, and here we are. And Mario's done a lot of research on this as well. Mario may have something, something to add. But what I wanted to the biggest thing I want to make uh, positive to the uh, audience and to the residents in the area. If you recall, a couple years ago, we were on a Zoom meeting and there was a request for a uh, 
rezoning of this parcel to a multiple family rezoning. That request was denied at that time because it just didn't make sense. What they were proposing, even what they showed, wasn't even compatible with what the zoning ordinance would allow. This is not that type of request. It's similar in nature, but they're looking to build single family homes, townhomes on this property, and they're looking for a conditional zoning request. And what that means is they don't want it to rezone to just multifamily. Once it becomes multiple family, they could build anything within the ordinance that falls under multifamily zoning. That's not what they're asking for, and that's not what the board will consider. What they are going to ask for and the board will consider is a special request to rezone it specifically for the items that they have presented. If they're single family townhomes um, that are laid out. I think you may have seen, I'm not sure what else was in the packet um, that went out to you in the, in the letters. So that's what they're going to be requesting tonight. If what they present is amenable to the planning commission, the planning commission could take the uh, steps of making a recommendation to the village council then to go forward with a special or a conditional use zoning and put together a very strict laid out agreement. What they're proposing and what would be allowed, and only that would be allowed to be done on the property if it moves forward. The alternative to that would be that the planning commission uh, doesn't like what they see in here, and then they would deny the request for the special conditional use uh, rezoning, and then it would be done at that point. It wouldn't go to village council. So just keep that in mind. Um, there, this isn't for apartments. It isn't going to be rezoned. They're even requ uh, requesting for it to be rezoned to multifamily flat where you can do anything in that zoning district. They're asking for something very specific. And you'll uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to put up on the screen here some of the plans that um, uh, when we get down to it, that'll show what they're proposing. Um, single family townhomes, multi story connected together. They are uh, not going to be density, uh, meeting the density of. Uh, like what multi family zones would allow, they're much less dense of a proposal in front of us. So I just want to make sure and preface that with everyone so they understand this is not at all what was similar to what was requested a few years ago. And just keep that in mind when you uh, come up and hopefully that answers at least some of the questions and concerns you might have. And that, that's what's going to be presented. So the chairman will now open up the public hearing and you guys make statements and comments on it. And then later on, the members will pick up the request themselves. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to get a motion that we open up the public hearing. Yeah, I will make a motion to open open public hearing for agenda item related to re conditional rezoning the Washington Triangle. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. nays? I'd like to open it up to the public one at a time, please. You'll have I'll have a timer here for three minutes. And I'm not here. Yeah, please come up to the podium. Thank you. I just have a question. I am Emma Taylor. I live at 208 Minnetonka. I'm in the township, not the village. And I am hearing impaired, so if I can like that, please speak up. Um, you said something about a packet having been sent out. There was letters sent out to homes within 300 foot per state statute uh, um, and uh, notifying everyone of, of the request in this hearing today. There was in the last for leader as well. Okay, but there wasn't a packet sent out with some of the plans in right, that? Right, that is uh, listed, I'm sorry, that is on our website under our planning commission. This whole packet, information packet is on there, but hopefully tonight uh, we'll be able to have it up on the screen as well. Okay, I might have a couple questions later on then. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. My name is Mark Zoyer. I live at 196 Minnetonka. I stopped by this building a couple weeks ago and got plans of what the guy wanted to build. I saw plans tonight that were different than what I saw from two weeks ago that I got out of this office. This is what I, I didn't bring the plans with me because I didn't think I needed to because I thought they were going to be this. Now I saw plans tonight where they're building more than what they proposed on that stipulated print to begin with. My point is this guy is going to sell this property after you bring it multi 
and then he can do whatever he wants to it. He can build the condos that he wanted to to begin with through the LCC gravel pit or whatever it is that's proposing to buy it now. That's only if they can get this stipulation passed as multifamily. And I believe, I, I think I talked to you. Yes, sir. And you showed me different plans from what I've seen tonight on yes, somebody sir. else's. I'm not aware of a second set of plans, so I'm well, not sure where the disconnect is. You showed me three and then two together. And that's the two together is why they wanted to make it multifamily. Separate them, make it all single family, and then we don't have an issue here. It'll be solved because there's nothing we can do about it. But I'm afraid the guy's going to take it, sell it to somebody else once you zone it in as multifamily, and he's going to be like the guy at Rochester that built, wanted to build back there during COVID and say, well, I'm going to put all these apartment buildings back there again. And it's not right. You're, you're, you're going to ruin our value of our property around us if, if you make this multifamily. And as homeowners around here, I think everybody agrees with me, we're, we're losing money. We're not gonna gain money. The township will gain money for the income and whatever, but the people who lived around here for the last 30 years of our lives or 40 years of our lives, we're losing out. And we don't wanna see that. We, we don't wanna see our value of our homes ruined. So, that's, I reckon my three minutes is up. Thank you. Anybody else like to come up? Yeah. My name is Shannon Strong. I live at 26 Lincoln Street. Um, and I actually, myself and um, one of my neighbors there were very vocal four years ago when this came up. I'm sure you all remember me. Um, based on what was proposed four years ago versus what, was, what is proposed here, I agree it is far less density. My question is, what is the need to rezone at multifamily when it's already zoned for single family homes? Why can't you just put single family homes in there and be done with it? I know it's all about greed. I know the property is going to be developed at one point, some point. It's not just gonna sit there vacant. I understand that. However, what is the purpose for rezoning other than greed? Yes, agree. You know, I mean, this is the lesser of the two evils, but still, build single family homes and be done with it. We don't have an issue with it. That's, you know, that's my two cents. I've, I've lived in Oxford on Lincoln Street for the last 30 years. And, you know, it's nice seeing the big field there with the trees and all that. And you guys, I know you've said you're not going to cut down trees, you're going to leave everything there, but I, I really have a hard time believing that. You know, I mean, corporate greed is rampant. I know you're a small corporation, but still, corporate greed is rampant. And I'm gonna have a rope going right up the back of my, um, you know, behind my backyard. Granted, you're gonna have, you know, sound barriers, noise barriers, whatever, but still. Single family homes is what it's zoned for, just do single family homes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jody Denzer, I'm a 184 Minnetonka. I'm going to talk about the safety concerns. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Since they put in the car wash, what's going on over there on M24, especially when that road comes out? So now we're going to put a coffee shop on that road that um, is for the vet also, and it will also be taking care of the future condos. I have watched, and her husband has seen too, accidents almost happen and happen there. So now you're gonna add, let's say 64 more cars to that road because 32 units times at least two cars per household. You're now gonna have all that traffic, the traffic from the coffee shop. As they're coming out here, these people coming from the car wash are trying to either turn left or right. We're gonna have another issue like at Drainer 24 when people are coming out of the Italian, DK's, the gas station. Too many vehicles all coming out at once. There's not a turn lane there either. That turn lane ends, and everyone's trying to like scooch up and make that turn lane extend, and they're hitting people in lanes on their right side too. 
So it's just a perfect storm there. I got caught in it the other day trying to go to the car wash because people are coming out of where um, Salvation Army, is it Salvation Army there? Goodwill. Goodwill and all those. They're pulling out into the turn lane to go south. I'm trying to get into the turn lane to go make a left-hand turn. It was like, oh crud, we're like in a standoff, Mexican standoff. Who's gonna go where? And you can't because you got all these cars coming back and forth. That's a safety concern. The other safety concern is looking at the blueprints. 36 inches, that's what a yard, like from my nose to the end of my finger, a fire truck is going to get down there. That's the emergency exit or the emergency access that you need for a multifamily thing. 36 inches. I can't see a fire truck, ambulance, anything getting down there. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I read the plans wrong, but that's what it looked like. That was the easement on the back side for mechanics. That was just my two cents. <laughs> Again, I believe this is a multi, it's a family area. This is an area that should be zoned for family. Fewer cars would be great for the area, also for the safety and concern of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Leah Scale and I live at 34 uh, Lincoln Street. Um, so right here on the plan document, I'm right on the corner there, right before that easement emergency exit, and that's my biggest concern uh, with this development plan. I want to mirror some of the other things that were said tonight about the um, zoning. I, I would agree. I don't like the multifamily aspect, and I don't like the safety concerns of an M24, um, but I do have major concerns about this back here. Um, 36 feet, I believe, is what it says on the plan. Um, 24 and 24 feet wide for that drive for an emergency vehicle. I went out there today and I measured with my measuring tape that didn't extend far enough for how far it actually is. Um, but going from my property line to my neighbor's property line, it, there's not enough room there to build a road. And um, I live there with my son and I feel that having really encroaching on my property there, there's a big concern and I don't I don't think this plan, at least for this area, um, is sufficient and really needs to be looked at again. Um, I, I don't think there's enough room. Um, again, they did talk about having that barrier there and I don't think there would be any room to maintain any of that between my property at 34 Lincoln and this roadway that they have planned. So that's what I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, like to have a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close public hearing for uh, agenda item conditional rezoning of the Washington Triangle. Support. Uh, we have a motion. We have support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a call now on item number seven to call the public if there's anything the public would like to add or say in regards to what's on the agenda or just in general. Yeah, I, would, I would like to know when is the board going to make a decision on this? Uh, is it going to be done tonight or is it going to be done in the, three months? We're going, to, we're going to look at making a recommendation tonight. We don't make a decision. We make a recommendation to the council and the council will make the decision. Give, give us a time when this is going to happen? Or? Uh, before the close of the night, because item number eight, we have new business number A, is the sign usage that we talked about earlier in the evening. And then we have item B, which is exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Be second. So, if, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just like, again, to you know, stress the traffic thing. I mean, my husband did narrowly avoid being in an accident with some <coughs> traffic pulling out of that little drive, multi-facility drive, I guess you could call it. Um, he did narrowly miss being in the accident. It literally happened all the time. And this was just not even two weeks ago. Yeah, I totally so, agree with that. So, I mean, the whole traffic issue is a big issue. Thank you. Especially Thank you. with the turn lane ending right there. Yeah, traffic's working right in that line. It's always been kind of bad, and now it's even worse. Okay. And, uh, you know, really, 
the one in Lake we had in town, or, or one right up town, one right up by the uh, Mr. Rainer, by by Rainer, and the one uh, that's over there by the uh, what, the bank up there, Oxford Bank, maybe. What you say? That's one of the lights. Yeah. 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 Broadway. Broadway. So you have three lights here, okay? The rest of there's, there's no lights whatsoever around there. So there's no really safety, no no way for people the time to get out. Mr. Chair. I believe yes. that people should be coming up and identifying. You gotta, their yes, I agree. Uh, if there's any more comments, I'll we'll ask you to come up to the. If there's no other comments, I'd like to move on to new business. New business item number A is PC 24 07 special use signage pursuant to the zoning ordinance section 7.48 F2B 51 South Washington Street, Oxford, Michigan 48371. Maximum surface display area of a projected wall sign, PID number PO04272020359, zoning C1 core commercial, district applicant, the good egg breakfast calf, owner uh, familiar properties, LLC, applicant Cal Mansour. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mario, do you, would you like to lead off and then we'll ask the applicant to come up and discuss things? Uh, yes. So, um, as summarized uh, earlier in the evening, this is an application uh, for a sign uh, projecting a wall on the sign. Uh, now, the existing structure is a two story multi tenant commercial building, and the applicant is proposing to occupy the ground floor eastern corner of the unit. Uh, and the applicant is proposing a 23 square foot wall sign. It will be internally illuminated, and it's an aluminum box sign, with yellow and white tax, and graphics on black background. But based on this proposed signage, uh, there are actually three standards which the applicant does not comply with. One, the surface area requirement, maximum of 16 and below 23. Two, uh, the fact that the projecting wall sign are required to only be above, to not be above the first floor, higher than the first floor, and they're proposing to be between the first floor. And the third, the fact that the projecting signs are shall not be internally illuminated and the applicant is proposed to be internally illuminated. So however, uh, when this sign permit is denied, the business owner has the opportunity to request um, that this sign be considered as a special use. So the special use criteria are laid out in the zoning ordinance. Uh, we go over them to make sure, and they basically cover the idea of whether this proposed sign would uh, be any kind of obstruction or negative impact to the character of the village or uh, something that is going to uh, the negative impact the face of business. So looking at these uh, seven different criteria, um, you know, first being whether there's, this would obscure the vision of drivers. Based on its height, it's going to be 15 feet, 6 inches above grade uh, on the northeast uh, corner of the building. And so there's no, I, it exceeds our clear vision standards, and so there's, it will not um, impact any visibility at all because it's also only projecting 50 inches out from the building, which is in compliance with the standards. So the proposed location will not obscure drivers. Um, let me ask if the <coughs> proposed materials and the design will be consistent with other lots in the village. Some signs in the downtown core have been installed uh, that are of similar construction. Uh, the sign itself is very clean and modern, and so the aesthetic, it's very uh, very attractive and has a modern aesthetic to it. So while it might not necessarily contribute to the historic character of the downtown, the building itself is actually modern and modest in the design. So the sign actually complements the building uh, as it is. Uh, looking at our other, other criteria, the other uh, prominent one would be what if this sign was to block the visibility of any other sign because of the fact that it's larger in area. But because this sign's location is in uh, approximately, it's like about 95 feet to the south of the next building and 220 feet to the north of the other building, this sign will not block any other sign in the downtown. Um, and finally, one other point to consider is whether this would be a nuisance to nearby residential uses. Within the downtown, we do allow residential on the second floor. I'm not sure if there are residential units currently above the second floor on the east side of the building, uh, of Washington Street. 
Uh, however, just to make sure that the sign does not uh, impact drivers and does not impact potential future tenants and, and uh, residences on the east side of Washington, we just recommend that the, uh, the signage be uh, lighting. So in the end, the Planning Commission does find that the proposed sign meets the special use criteria of the zoning ordinance. We would recommend approval uh, and that it be contingent upon the installation of a photometric sensor with an automatic dimmer to control the light levels. Mario, you talked about uh, size, height, illumination. You covered those in your recommendation. What about the material? The material itself, I, I do believe it's an aluminum box sign with an aluminum face and then the letters we're going to, so it's going to be a dark background that will restrict light to only the text coming out. And um, we do, we have had some signs in the core of that particular uh, um, configuration and with those materials. As I mentioned, the, the eventual you know, look of it will be pretty modern uh, and, and clean. So it's clean, simple lines. So that's, you know, that's pretty attractive in terms of sometimes being a classic style. Something simple and clean can sometimes come across as classic as well. So I think, I think given that the, uh, the text and the font are very, you know, some kind of modern particular styles, not any kind of like action graphic or something, it's, 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 I think it's appropriate for the style. Okay. Would the applicant like to come up and talk to us about your proposed sign? I don't know what more I can say. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Cal Mansour, and I'm here to represent Good A. My address is 11035 East Nine Mile Road. And uh, I think Mario touched bases on everything. This sign, um, as far as the dimmer is concerned, as you, as you notice, the text is the only thing that's going to be illuminated. The black on that, nothing illuminates except for that yellow on the A and the verbiage itself. Everything else is pretty much opaque, you can't see nothing through, nothing will penetrate through. Uh, as far as the material is concerned, it's everything that we pretty much, we've done quite a bit of work in Oxford. It's aluminums from acrylics to LED lighting, low voltage. Um, I don't know if you guys have any more questions. Actually, uh, well, I, as soon as you get down, I'm going to go down to the commission. Yes, sir, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I do want to just uh, stress one thing. It is literally half the size of what was there before. I was on the original, we originally built that sign when that strip center was built. And the framing that you're looking at now, the two poles that are sticking out, those are directly attached to the entire infrastructure of that building, because that's what the committee required. Uh, for that to, one day, if you guys are wanting to get rid of it, it's going to be a mess for the landlord. But the sign that we have now is literally half the size of what was there before. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Leslie, you have any? Um, Mario, uh, does a special use sign permit run with the property or is it specific to the business? As a special use, we don't distinguish it from another, so technically it would run with the property. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question to work on that one. Yes, this sir. sign is a square box, so you just take the acrylic out. You can put new acrylic in. Replace it, yes, sir. Future tenants can come and go, and they no longer have to rip that sign down because the other one was designed specifically for the 51 Diner. Correct. It had that look to it. And with this one here, the panels, they do have retainers which are removable. So if someone were to go in and replace them, I mean, they don't have to take down the box no more. You just reface the box, and it's done. Okay. Tom? Uh, Mario, uh, projecting signs, refresh my memory, for the second floor, would they be eligible for a projecting sign? Technically, no, because it's the same standard that applies. We only allow projecting signs on the ground floor. Okay. I think the idea was to mimic the idea of when more for a person walking down the street and seeing, you know, a classic swinging sign on the right. floor or a standard projecting mm -hmm. sign on the ground floor. Okay. Uh, and you'd mentioned uh, the, the, uh, about the previous sign, the special or, or the signs, the special land use go with the property. So. Would, would that mean that uh, that the good egg could, could have gone, kept up that, uh, the, the five and uh, one diner sign and just change it to good egg? Well, the issue with that is um, we had a different review process at that time. 
for special use. I believe there was a design review application that was more broad. And so, um, and I'll be honest, that was before my time. So I'm not exactly familiar with it. I have done some research in the past to see if there was some existing right that the companies had. Like I said, it was a different review process, and it didn't, it wasn't special use. So it didn't run with the land, and didn't run with the land. Oh, okay, okay. That's uh, my knowledge. Okay, and for the applicant. Uh, so, uh, what, what's the reason not to, to have it within the guidelines of our sign ordinance? Um, what's the reason for not to have it in your sign? Um, well, I'm why, the lar why the larger sign instead of... It's the, not the, a larger sign, it's half the size of what was there before. No, but our ordinance is 16 square feet. I mean, we can reduce it to 16 square feet. We'd have to cut those poles that are there to accommodate that for sure. We can accommodate that. But we were proposing a larger sign and then uh, we spoke, I, don't, I apologize, I don't know who we spoke to. They called us at the office because uh, we had a question to ask and they said if we were to reduce it to this and we're only asking for seven square feet more, you know, that he would favor that, he wouldn't have a problem with that. So that's what we presented the new sizes. It was actually a little bit larger than this one, but we reduced it. Yes, sir. I could maybe help clarify something. Thank you. Um, the, the sign before, before was very tall and narrow. Their logo wouldn't fit on there appropriately. I mean, so yes, could it possibly? So there's more of a shrunk down sign, a little bit wider. Right. So I think the, the, the lettering that was uh, or heard of before fit that type of a sign, tall, narrow sign, where this is more of a, based on their uh, logo and stuff, it'd be difficult to use that same now, I'm not saying square footage they could make this smaller, but then it might not reach far enough from pole, the existing poles. They need to kind of accommodate some sign to reach on those existing mounts. I like the sign. I like the design. Uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, struggling with, with the size piece of it. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the custody, the, our customer, uh, your, he's, uh, the family lives directly across the street from the parking lot. So they are residents of Oxford. They're very well versed, and I think they're going to do very well there. They'll be an asset to the city. And that sign will help them a lot. I mean, it's not it's not a overly aggressive. I mean, I'm not questioning your guys' policies or your ordinance, but it's not an aggressive sign. When you see that thing lit at nighttime, you're literally going to see uh, maybe a total of 12 letters. I mean, they're, they're minute. Even with that size, they're minute because we couldn't make it any larger. They're pretty small. I mean, the only thing that's going to really stick out is the good egg. That's it. The rest of it is like, it's going to like fade away because the whole thing's opaque. You can't see through it. Mm -hmm. I do like that. Yeah. One, one final question. Mario, for you. So, uh, say the good egg uh, uh, moves out, another uh, company moves in, uh, another business moves in. Uh, obviously, going to change the sign to their business. Would they have to come to us? Uh, you know, say they want, you know, some pure white sign with red and yellow and green letters and, you know, something that's, that's... That's, that's a, of a different aesthetic. Um, I guess that is a good point. Uh, the, the, sign, the, the zoning ordinance does typically allow a face change to a sign. Um, however, as a special use sign, uh, you do have the authority to grant, to approve with conditions. So you could approve uh, the sign, the, can, this special land use with the conditions that the color scheme remain or be a similar, or you can be as specific or as broad as you want. You could also just say, we recommend any face change in the future have light colored letters on a dark background. You know, something more broad so that the next tenant, if there is another tenant, you know, uh, does that. Because um, Mario, that can, way, you, can that condition be tied to a specific business at hand? Yeah, I could. Because, because, I, because problem, yeah. when it comes to special land uses too, you could say that this site is for that particular unit as well. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Perhaps I can uh, add a little too. You currently already have a special uh, design approval for returning eliminated signs, right? So maybe you could revert back to say this conditional use would be, <coughs> any, any future conditional use would have to revert back to design approval still to the plan commission. Mm -hmm. That is a, that's a very good point. Yeah. Normal process. Yeah, so. I like that. Mm -hmm. no, my concerns and questions have been answered. Mm -hmm. yep. CJ, do you have any comments? No, that was pretty thorough. Okay. Uh, I just like to, 
I was concerned about the pass through from one owner to another owner or one tenant to another tenant. If in the motion we can take care of that with a condition, I don't see a problem with that. I do want to include the dimming and the timer on it as we have done in all the other signs that we've approved through here in the last year, year and a half. Uh, I think that would be wise to do. So Leslie, uh, if anybody has any more questions? No, all my concerns are being addressed. Thank you. Then I look for a motion. Somebody like to make a motion? I will, <clears throat> I will make a motion to approve the special use sign uh, application for 51 South Washington, uh, the Good Egg Breakfast Cafe, contingent upon fulfilling the recommendations outlined in the McKenna letter dated June 10th, 2024. In addition, a, a condition that limits the special use sign approval to the Good Egg Breakfast Cafe business in an entirety. May I suggest you add the dimmer and the timer as well? Which should be defined in the recommendation letter Very good. from McKenna on June 10th. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, let's take a roll call vote. Hi there. Yes. Schultz? Yes. Uh, Noel? Yes. Gasdor? Yes. Any absent is Ballard and Thomas. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> we'll look forward to having you open. Yes, sir. With a sign. And they're, they, they make an excellent breakfast. <laughs> they really do. Well, I'll be there. Yes. Yeah. Thank, you. Check it out. Thank you for sure. Thank you. All right. Item number B, new business. PC 24-08, conditional rezoning request from R1 residential to RM multifamily, owner-occupied townhouse style units, Area known as South Washington Triangle, partial ID PO 04242780020. Property owner, Oakland County Holding LLC, applicant, Gravel Development Group. Um, I think we'll start off with Mario if you'd like, then we'll ask the Gravel Group to come up and talk. And Mr. Doerr, if you'd like to interject in between that, that'd be fine too. Um. Mario, do you have a, you put something on the screen for us, please? Well, I, I'll use my notes first, and then at the end, I'll, I'll Very good. To highlight the, uh, the detail of the plans, because uh, as Joe mentioned, uh, the plan set that we received and that we're uh, considering tonight um, was submitted by the applicant. And um, with a specific date on that set. And so that actually speaks to a question uh, regarding this uh, whole entire process. So as noted, the site is currently zoned single family. The applicant is actually requesting a conditional rezoning. So I just wanted to reemphasize the fact that this is different than a standard rezoning. In a standard rezoning, the planning commission recommends and then council decides on the entire list of uses that could be done in a multifamily designation, all those uses. So that includes any kind of uh, apartment building or any kind of development that would meet our dimensional requirements. So for example, if it had 15 dwelling units per acre, that would comply with the ordinance. That's standard rezoning. So the, the planning commission's question at that point is to consider would that whole host of uses be compatible with our master plan uh, and compatible with adjacent, with the physical conditions of the property and compatible with the adjacent neighborhood. Because that's all part of the question. <coughs> However, as a conditional rezoning, the applicant, it, this is uh, based in state law. The applicant uh, has voluntarily proposed to restrict the list of uses on the site in the RM district to just a, to just one. In this case, they're proposing uh, owner-occupied townhouse development. Um, so they're proposing a particular use. They're proposing a particular set of conditions. And uh, with regards to that proposal, it, it, they've submitted a plan um, and. This is a conceptual plan uh, as part of this process. If this were to be approved by council, um, the next step in the process would be for the applicant to come back to submit for site plan review <coughs> and approval. So while they'll talk about different standards of the, of the actual development, they still have to comply with all the other standards in our zoning ordinance. Everything else that's not addressed on that plan has to be addressed in the, the site plan. 
So for example, things like making sure that the fire department has adequate turning radius for their emergency vehicles. Uh, that has to be addressed at site plan if the rezoning is approved. One other aspect of this then finally that's different than a standard rezoning is the fact that uh, a, as, as a draft has been prepared, uh, there is a conditional rezoning agreement that's enacted between the property owner and the village. Uh, the main part, purpose for that agreement is to number one, make sure that the conditions that, we, that are being considered by the planning commission and considered by council are the ones that were be locked in for future development. And then number two, actually, a key point of this is if for some reason the, the site doesn't become developed as proposed uh, by this particular group, by these property owners, then, uh, the result, then the property automatically reverts back to its original district. So it would automatically revert back to single family. Uh, so that's another uh, aspect of this. And then finally, one other aspect is uh, the village and the property owners would negotiate the time frame for the development. Uh, and so they would, they would, they would so you're gonna negotiate the, one other unique aspect of this is that technically the village is not negotiating with the property owners. The property owner has, the state law states that the property owners is volunteering these conditions. So the planning commission and council is just reacting to those conditions uh, and those criteria. You can state your opinion on whether you, on those conditions, whether they're, they're appropriate, whether they are, uh, would cause you to vote for or against the rezoning. But in the end, it's not a negotiation. If, if during the course of the evening, either here or council, the, the uh, property owners want to take under advisement some of your comments, they can step back and then present a revised plan in the future. That's the process. It's new to the village, uh, it's in state law, it's been in state law since 2006, but it's just new to the village, and so apologies for going on. So as proposed, the applicant is considering a condition of rezoning for owner-occupied townhomes. Uh, under standard RM zoning, they're permitted 15 dwelling units per acre, and the applicant is requesting a density of 8.3 dwelling units per acre. Uh, so the site would have four four unit townhouse buildings, and then two eight unit townhouse buildings. So there will be a total of 32 townhouses on the site. Uh, the buildings would be 23 feet in height, uh, and each four unit building would have two bedroom units and two three bedroom units, sorry. There'd be two two bedroom units and two three bedroom units each uh, for these buildings. So even though this is the condition of rezoning, we still go over our standard criteria, the number one criteria that's appropriate is whether this is compliant with the master plan. The village's 2011 master plan designates the site as multifamily, as a standard multifamily development. So that's been the idea for the property since 2011. However, in 2016, the village did do a uh, South of Washington redevelopment plan. We looked at the site more specifically, and in 2016, uh, there was the idea to encourage uh, not necessarily a straight multifamily zoning, but uh, it encourages unique single family style units, such as a bungalow court or as a townhomes or something unique because it has to reflect the unique configuration of the site. The site is triangular, it's hard to develop. That's the reason why it's one of the last sites being developed in the village, is because it's the hardest one to develop. Um, so the master plan still kept while encouraging this type of unique unit, it still keeps the master plan's future land use designation as multifamily. The 2016 plan had the opportunity and they didn't change it. They kept it as planned for multifamily. So um, one other thing I will just point out is that when it comes to unique style of housing types, you know, such as these bungalow courts, those bungalows <coughs> typically develop at 10 to 12 bungalows. Uh, and then the applicant, once again, is proposing 8.3 dwelling units per acre. Uh, and uh, if this were a, once again, if this were a standard rezoning, they'd be going up to have the potential to do up to 15 dwelling units. So in the end, uh, as this is a single family, owner-occupied single family style unit with a lower density than multifamily, uh, it, it would appear that the proposed development condition rezoning is consistent with the 2016 and the 2011 master plan. 
we look at things that besides physical features, you know, the site is undeveloped, but it's really an urban lot because it's surrounded by development. There are trees and there's turf grass, um, but those are the only natural features present. There are no other creeks, streams, changes in areas. It's, it's a relatively flat uh, property with no hydrological features. So the site would be capable of handling uh, residential development, sometimes residential development. Then uh, looking at another important issue, of course, is compatibility with surrounding uses. The property to the east has been developed for commercial uses, including the car wash and the proposed uh, coffee stand. And then, of course, the property to the north uh, and south and west is occupied by single family homes. Uh, these existing residents vary in size, some uh, uh, from, from about 800 but up to 1,500, 1,600 square feet in size for the single family homes. And they include both ranch style and uh, two story style homes. The proposed townhomes will be approximately 1,200 to 1,400 square feet. Uh, they will have two to three bedrooms in each individual unit. So it would appear that the size and scale of the structures, once again, they're only going to be 23 feet in height. They're not exceeding, they're two story, they're not two and a half story or three story, they're two story dwellings. So, so they're similar size and scale and size and scale of uh, the adjacent development. We look at utilities. Uh, there's utility mains both on Washington both on Washington Street. Uh, we defer to the city engineer for I mean for the village engineer to eventually determine it, but that would be different than site plan. But these number of units should be capable of being uh, accommodated by the utilities in the village. And then finally looking at um, so the other thing I wanted to point out in my review letter is when it comes to the traffic and the capacity of the street system, um, the site does have technically frontage on Mechanic Street. However, we always, uh, back in 2016, they knew that, that would be a problematic issue given the size and scale of that uh, width. I think it's 32, maybe even less feet of frontage on Mechanic. So at that time, excuse me, not at that time, but since then, um, access to Washington Street was established. Uh, it wasn't there at previously, but as development has occurred on Washington Street, the village took the effort to establish an easement for this property to access Washington so that they do not access the Um So that access is established. It's in a legally binding easement over that property, over that existing drive that exists right now onto Washington. So the traffic would only go to Washington Street, it would not go to McCann. Uh, and then finally, you know, looking at these townhomes, uh, you know, they're proposed for garages, the depth of the driveway isn't significant. Uh, and when it comes to these configuration and proposed configuration, that I'll show in a second, you know, they, they don't really have any opportunity to have more than two cars per dwelling. But if these were single family homes, they could be used to accommodate three or four or five cars on a lot. And as we know, with modern families, some modern homes, especially mature homes, they have multiple drivers. So they'd be looking at potentially three, four cars per dwelling if these were developed as single family homes. So based on the configuration, it seemed like it'd be very difficult for them to have more than just two cars per unit as proposed. So uh, those are some of the highlights of my review letter with regards to the rezoning. Uh, in the end, the Planning Commission once again makes a recommendation based on what's in front of you to the Village Council on this proposed conditional uh, rezoning. And um, I summarized my, my findings as a fact. Uh, it once again in my review letter at seven points. Uh, but I can take any question at that time and I will attempt to throw up the, uh, the image of the plan that was submitted. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I just want to speak to some of the traffic concerns. Mario touched on the easement driveway that uh, Dr. Steep, the veterinarian, he, he went to purchase that property, he needed more parking, and the previous owner knew he couldn't land a lot of the property out back, so they worked out a deal. He bought that to create some parking, and he created the easement to keep the rear parcel from being landlocked, right? All of that went through the review process, the MDOT, because that's an MDOT street and 24 is it's not we don't have jurisdiction over that street of ingress egress and how the, the driveways and stuff are designed so that uh, particular driveway easement as well as the car wash 
went through and got approvals and stuff. That's something that's out of our purview. Mr. Majority, anything you'd like to add before the applicants come up? Would you like to come up and introduce yourselves? Sure. Hi. Good evening. I'm uh, I'm Brett Nixon with the Gravel Development Group. I'm one of the um, one of the partners. Um, this is Jeff Chino. I'm a partner, obviously, in the Gravel Development Group. I'm Andrew Miller. I represent Design House um, Architectural Comments. So, um, if there's any architectural specific questions, I'll I'll have uh, Andrew uh, answer them. If I'm if I can't do that, um, I think Mario summarized what we're what we're asking to do quite well. Um, I just would say that uh, with the challenging configuration of the lot, um, we feel as though this is a good use for the site. Uh, we think it's fitting with the area, and. Um, you know, knowing that it's in R1 district, there's R1 surrounding it, we try to maintain R1 setbacks around the perimeter of the property uh, so that to provide more buffering. So you'll see that on the, uh, when Mario gets that up there. Um, I don't know if there's any, uh, I don't know if there's any other specific questions you'd like to ask about the, uh, about the proposal that I, that I can answer while I'm here. I'm gonna open it up to the commissioners. Uh, um, I have a couple architectural questions, but I can wait until after Mario is done talking about it and reviewing it. Let me stand off to the side so everybody can, can see. Can you speak directly into the mic, please? Sure. Thank you. I'm also. Okay, so are you able to hear me all right? Um, my questions relate to the intended use um, and whether or not there will be an effort to incorporate any universal design in any of the units, in some it? of the units, in all of the units. Can you talk all about that? The overall, the overall design you're talking about? Well, yeah, overall design, sure. It'll be the same type as in the surrender shown. It will have the same design type throughout the all of these. Just a minute, excuse me. Sir? Sir? Now, if you're disrupting our meeting. Would you like to come sit down and listen to what we have to say? And then I'm listening, but I'm just looking at your diagram up here. That's all I'm doing. I, you're to have a conversation go on with our, our our planner, and I it's taken away from our meeting. Go ahead. So Would I'm you? not talking about the overall appearance. I'm talking about the actual uh, design elements within each unit. Is there any interest or effort to incorporate universal design in terms of doorway width, in terms of accessibility in any of the units at all? So, so, so by, by, uh, by universal design, you're talking about like, like for uh, handicap access and things like that? That sort of thing, yes, to make sure that um, the design is universally accessible for people whether they're handicapped or not. I, I believe that the that the design is universally accessible um, as far as doorway widths and all of that. Um, but I mean, there's there's no uh, like like uh, you know they're all two floors, so they're not like a yes, stairway that. assist or I, I, nothing like that. I just wanted to know yeah. if you were going to incorporate any elsewhere. I know there's they have yeah stairs. yeah. So no, the, the the intent is for them all to be designed the same way, mm -hmm. and so. As far as universal design, um, you know, are, are they? They're, they're not elevated, so is there a handicap ramp necessary? I don't, I don't feel I'm, so. I'm not talking about a handicap ramp. I'm really talking about the physical space within each unit. Universal design, you know, generally speaking, is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. I'm not talking about handicap ramps. I'm really yeah. talking about, like you mentioned, doorways, accessible. Uh, toilet seat heights, that sort of thing. Yeah, I believe they would they would comply with all of those like universal design uh, requirements that you're referring to. Okay, um, that's all of my questions for right now. I'll probably have some more. I, I have a question for you. Why are you asking about the universal designs? What 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 have I missed? I feel like I missed something. Well, I'm asking about it because I'm curious about. I know this is a concept plan. I, got, I understand that, and that at any time that the 
actual plans are going to come before us, we'll be looking at detail. But I just want to know like what the development's direction was. Who are they developing this for? I know that there are stairs in it. I know that they're intended to be single family units. Um, uh, I understand that and this, the uh, space allotment for each, you know, the two and three bedrooms, they're not super large, but there's a, there's a whole segment of the population that would be possibly interested in this type of unit. Um, for whatever you know the market cost is going to be and yeah. Yeah. I just was curious about and hoping actually mm -hmm. that every effort would be made within the actual layout and plan to accommodate as many universal design features as possible yeah I, I believe that the layout uh, would be accommodating <coughs> to um, many of the universal design features that you're referring to so I, I guess I just want to go down as saying I think those are important so that so that the type of homeowner, resident homeowner, occupant who can live here does not have to be, you know, able-bodied in every possible way. That there there is some flexibility with that. That's the sort of thing I'm sure. going to be looking for when it comes back. Okay, sure. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, Mario, Mario, just to confirm, so uh, with the conditional, uh, the size, uh, the, the number of units, uh, that can all be locked in and can't be changed after Village Council approval, correct? Once they determine those numbers. Correct, because um, the, the provided the plan that was submitted uh, is included as an appendix to the uh, agreement, then that would be part of uh, the approval criteria. It's basically basically the development of the site, and the applicant has provided a, a, a graphic table that does show those dimensions. So that's something that you know would be would govern our my site the site plan review of the village. So as we go and look at it. You know the fact that there's eight eight point three. I didn't calculate it. That's what their proposed numbers are. And I mean, I didn't create it. They I confirmed that that's what they're proposing. And the density, they're they're very straightforward with what they're proposing. The density here is eight point three units, four townhouse buildings, one to four, eight townhouses buildings, five to six, 20, 32 buildings total. So thirty two would be the max they could do. And then they have a good uh, estimation of both the existing standard dimensional requirements, the RM requirements, but then the house they're proposing. So for example, you can see that in a single family district, the only the, the minimum front yard setback is 15 feet. In multifamily it's 25, uh, technically because of the size of the areas that are going to 30 um, with regards to that. And then for example, the two the, in a single family district, you can go as high as 30 feet on a structure. In multifamily, we're limited to 25. They're going 23 feet, four inches. Okay. So, could you scroll back over to the left? Yes. So the number of units you said. Okay. So four. Okay. Oh, thank you. If you could, uh, uh, in the white shirt. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. But and these are the plans that you should have in your packets too. Yeah. Just for everybody's. And so that would be part of the, <coughs> the conditional approval. That would be presented to the, to the council, and then that's what they would consider. Okay, okay. Um, and then that would be included in the document, and the document everybody signs it, and it's required to the county, and other good legalese stuff. Okay. A uh, uh, couple things, or actually, one, just one question. Uh, well, first of all, I, I do like the design. Uh, I, you know, I, I do think that that does fit in. Uh, characteristically with you know uh, with the surrounding areas and I do like that um, one question I that I have so uh, the so units one or buildings one two three and four yep. are basically what we see in the picture here is that correct yeah that's a four unit building and then these these ones are a four and a four, they're tied together so that we, we moved them together like that so that we could maintain the 30 foot setback around the perimeter of the property. So, so basically uh, five and six would be this 
and it's another one right, right, next, right next to it. Yeah, just a continuation. It's the same. It's the same. If you look, if you were to break it right here, yep. that's that one, and then that's another one right next to it. But they're joined, they're joined together you. as one building, so it would be consistent with that look that's in front of you on the uh, on the in the proposal. Would there uh, would would you consider? Um, the, the, the one concern that I have uh, in, in hearing some of the comments, um, that, that's, that's going to be a pretty long, I mean, two buildings together like that is going to be, you know, visually pretty long, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, all those units. Would you consider uh, making those uh, four units? Like, so basically taking out one of the building sixes and one of the building fives? So making them all four unit? If you would zoom out, um It, it, that would break it, it would break it up a little bit more. It, 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 it would look a little bit more like if we single family. Put the, put the put the spacing in there. We would have to go down to the, the the minimum RM requirement on the setbacks on this corner right here. So we could fit it with put spacing in there, but trying to accommodate the increased setbacks so that we can maintain more buffering. That's why that's why the concept shows them move together. Was to try and maintain that all the way around, but if that's if that's a sticking point, we can consider. Can we consider it? Um, but that's that's why they're moved. That's why they're moved together like that was to increase. So there, I mean, would, would, would you be willing to take, so the, you know, so building six, uh, the one next to it, the blank one, right? Yeah. Would you be willing to take that blank one totally out in the, in the same with building five? So you basically you have all four unit. The, 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 the challenge is, is this is a difficult site. Challenge is this is a difficult site to develop and we need to make it so that it makes sense to do the development. So we're trying to, to get enough units to make it so that we can we can make it possible to do the development gotcha. so that's the challenge here so um, that's why it's proposed the way that it is and we we, we, we we bounce all of these things back together and we look at it and we thought it would be more desirable to move them together and have a bigger setback around the perimeter gotcha. if that's not the case if it would be more desirable to go to like a standard RM setback, which is like 10 feet, I think, Mario, is that what it is? I, I don't know off the top of my head. And then put the spacing in there and have those just be a, the same building all the way around. We would entertain that. Okay. Yeah. But as far oh, like as, as far as for going to uh, uh, a 32 down to down to a, down to 28, so so uh, seven buildings instead of um, the eight, that would make it really challenging to. To, to do this project. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Scott? Um, I've got a, uh, well, a handful of questions. Okay. Try to keep it to a to handful. And I believe it was Brett? Yeah, it's Brett. Okay. Um, and a couple for you, Brett, and for you as well, Mario. The one, I appreciate the consideration for the setback of the neighboring properties, um, whether that's consistent with those that live there or not um, I think it, it's important to highlight that as being a strong consideration for what could have been proposed in the development so I, I appreciate that being being considered um, the owner occupied townhouse townhouses in the description what is the definition of owner occupied well, well they're individually owned um, you know, obviously, we we would uh, we would own them until at such a time that they're sold. So the plan is to build them as spec homes, M meaning you're going to build these properties and put a for sale sign on them. They're the not. Plan gonna would be, be to sell them. Let me rephrase the question. Um, you will you will the development will be completed while you're in the process of selling the homes to private individuals or, or we would or we would sell them to. Uh, to anyone that wanted to buy it. Do you have Do you have uh, buyers right now in I, I advance don't. of breaking ground? I don't. Okay. And then the maybe this is a question for Mario, Brett. Um, under owner occupied, 
And I'm trying not to get hung up on that that uh, that, that language. Um, but you've got what is it, 32 um, units, rental properties, right? Rental rental units have come up as a point of discussion within in the the commission and in the council, the community in in general. Um, the definition of owner occupied does not limit the ability to um, put a, a unit for rent, for example. Um, so the issue would be, and it gets into ownership, I guess, when it comes to this, in, in the end, it would be a site, it would be a condominium or a site condominium, the entire development, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So as that, um, which is which is how a lot of single family, a lot of majority of single family homes are being constructed in Michigan, mm -hmm. um, they would have a master deed and bylaws for the association that, because once the developer is completed and they sold all the units, this the the com the detention pond, the road, uh, you know, the common areas, they would be under the care of the association, and then in the master deed, they would list what who uh, can. You know, live in each unit and how they sell them. Typically, in the, in the master deed in the bylaws, they very restricted as to uh, whether any of them can be leased or subleased or, or Airbnb or anything mm -hmm. like that. The master deed had condo associations are much more strict on those things than mm -hmm. anything I've seen in the municipal level. Knowing that a, um, a master deed and subsequent association is required in this type of development, has one already been drafted? No. Okay. We, haven't done, we, haven't, we haven't worked that, to that point okay. yet. Okay. Do we know at what point in the development it is required? It would be part of final site plan approval. We would look, uh, we would be, they would be required to submit the draft master deed and bylaws when construction plans are being submitted. If they, you know, they get to that point, then that's at, at that time they can see that. And you can request that at the preliminary level too mm -hmm. uh, for the standard master deed and bylaws because that's part of standard site kind of developments. Okay. And, and the, the series of questions is intended to further clarify for the commission as well as those in the public of what exactly the planning commission is reviewing, um, which is the um, conditional rezoning request. There are then additional reviews um, where the commission would um, scrutinize, for lack of better term, a proposed site plan, and from there, then additional details that we would review prior to further development of the uh, of the property. So that was the the rationale behind the series of questions there, both for the commission and those listening. Um, the. Public comment regarding um, emergency access, I believe it would be in the west corner. So we have a road that's coming into a, a circle there. And for my clarification, um, that is in fact a emergency access road that would be cut, paved, curbed, etc. out no, to Mechanic Street. No, it's proposed as a emergency access. It's a gravel access that would be gated. It would probably, I'm sure the fire department would require a Knox box or something if that's stored. Mm -hmm. So that there would be the only one that could access it. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be an access to Mechanic Street for anyone else to use. Mm -hmm. It's uh, solely for um, emergency purposes, should 24 be blocked or something like that. And there's an emergency in the, in the development. Okay. And, and okay I think, sorry, just to point out, at the site plan review level, Final site plan review level. We just make sure that that level, that the, that road is, that it does have to be constructed to stand the weight of emergency vehicles. But in the end, it would, it would, it's not for any kind of permanent purpose uh, access. The only people that are intended to access that are the emergency vehicles and the fire department. They're the only ones that do it. But it's not. It generally is never paved. It's a gravel road that's mm -hmm. sufficient base to handle the weight of the vehicles. And the details in the design of that access road, including the gate, would be a, included in a site plan? Yep. Okay. So again, clarification for the commission, we are not reviewing the site plan and all of the details of the development. Our intent is to review the conditional rezoning request. Okay. Um, no further questions. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. I would like to go last if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Perfect timing. Awesome. awesome. I want to make sure. All right. Um, 
how I was curious how much roughly you think each condo would go for. I think they'd start in the four hundred thousands. Okay. Yeah. Four hundred thousand times thirty-two divided by three point eight six acres total. This is it. Divided by three point eight six. Yeah. So. Um. If it, like, if it's time, to, like. Do we have time to converse with us afterwards, or is this that this part of that time now? This is this is your time just, just with respect to everyone in the room to ask the applicant as well as any of our support groups questions. Okay, awesome. Um, so, Mario, as a general statement, are the um, are condo do condos tend to be more or less eco friendly than single family homes? It, it all depends on the level of, cons of construction of the single family homes and the attributes. You know, it's kind of a broad question because, you know, in theory, in single family homes, they're large enough where they could uh, have, um, you know, other attributes such as like um, utility systems that are more energy efficient because the private homeowner can choose to do that. Well, actually, and then technically in single family, in like these condos, they could choose. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, I don't know if it'll be an option during construction, but at some point they could choose to have campus water heaters and, and maybe even geothermal, you know, uh, heating and that sort of thing. Um, so, but generally speaking from a cost construction standpoint, single, uh, Multifamily structures, condos are more efficient just because the, the amount of materials, typically the amount of uh, 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 waste involved with the construction of the, of the structures is less. And then the, just the energy efficiency of having uh, the construction at this close proximity just makes it typically more. But there are a lot of different factors that could go into that, whether to, to in the end determine what is or isn't. Right. More efficient. Okay. Um, I guess I'm, I'm looking at these properties and per acre, these would be some of the most profitable properties in Oxford for tax revenue generation. Um, I'm okay, but the, the conversation's for later, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, the the triangle in the on the bottom on the bottom here. This was the water retention. Uh, again, yeah, it's proposed. Rod, maybe Mario, my water Mario. You want to make a comment about that about the site plan? Um, I mean, in general, it's good that they've accommodated for that. They probably done. I don't know, but I know the firm does good work, and so that typically they at least done some initial calculations to in terms of capacity for the retention system. Um, and given Oakland County's recent approval of uh, higher higher standards for uh, stormwater, the, the intent is to make sure that this site does not negatively impact not only from a, from a stormwater standpoint, I mean, a, a runoff standpoint, but actual capacity for this to hold its share of rainwater during a 100-year storm event and not dump it into uh, the adjacent uh, storm surface. So this is going to be designed to modern standards versus single family and others that are just sheet flow into the street. Um, so, so it will visibly be a pond. Like when Building Five looks out, they'll see a, a pond in their backyard. Well, it, it's a, it's an, probably more of an indentation with grass, not standing water. I, as you know, most of the soil around here is sandy and gravelly, so pretty much everything goes in the ground. So I find it, I, I, I think it'd be very difficult to maintain standing water pond in that in that site. But it would be an area for the for the site water to to collect to Mario's point, such that it didn't go to any of the surrounding properties. Right. I guess. And I actually, sorry, just one other piece of information because technically, during site plan review, we could talk about you know more appropriate uh, water uh, water tolerance species and actually different levels. 
It is true that because of our unique soil, there probably is going to be a standing water level that you could have more water specific species because usually you design, if these were designed as a bioretention field, you have three different levels of types of species of plantings. Mm -hmm. Chances are they'd be a little different. But you can get into that and basically the idea is that it's more of a wildflower feature rather than just a Kentucky bluegrass that gets mowed and, and, and is not attractive when the, at the growth at the bottom. Hmm. I know mean, that the, uh, you know, typically the, the uh, a standard Kentucky bluegrass, just thrown back there with hydro seed, just gets mowed and that's it. They don't mow the bottom because they can't because it's wet. But if they put in natural uh, native plantings, they take care of, they do grow taller because they're native, because they're native plants, so they do attract, you know, rabbits and squirrels and things. So whether you, what your opinion of a rabbit is, or <laughs> vermin, I don't know if you have. And mosquitoes and everything else. Right, exactly, that's true, I mean, it is, it's the other, other, uh, I don't know what they... Mara, I'd like to keep this focus yeah, for sorry. CJ right now. Yeah, um, <coughs> yeah, if we have a chance to address the other, like, well, I think what, you, what has been suggested that tonight we're here to make a recommendation to the council. Right. And you'll have an opportunity to talk about site planning. And, and if you're concluded, then I want to, I have some questions of my own I'd like to ask. Uh, Mario, I'd like, or Joe, walk us through the system, the process from here out. We're, gonna, we're asked tonight to make a recommendation to the council. Where does it go from there? So after that, um, the applicant would take a look at the draft uh, pension rezoning agreement, and it would be finalized with more details. Uh, so that way, when it is placed on, the next step would be village council agenda, and that village council, the, uh, the agreement would be in a, a much more finalized form, just so that way they can have a better so opportunity. I've got, a, I've got a simple mind. Sure. We make them a recommendation, yes or no, goes to the village council. Let's just say it's a yes, okay? They look at it and they negotiate with the property owners or does it come back to the PC? Well, so what it is, is once again, there's no level of negotiation. You react discussion. to discussion. Yeah, so it's discussion. So you, you're looking at it, you're discussing it, you make a recommendation to council. It goes to council, they'll look at it and discuss it. The applicant has the opportunity at a point in time, if they feel like it's not going, for lack of a better word, it's not going their way, they can ask for it to be tabled so they can come back uh, and revise it as based on comments. However, uh, if council is uh, amenable to these standards, they can vote approval uh, of the rezoning. Then the uh, documents are signed. Whatever number of, of months or years that are in the agreement, that's, that's the time the frame. applicant has to either uh, submit a site plan to the village, so then it comes back here for site plan, preliminary, and then final site plan. So we'll have two opportunities, if it goes through the council, to come back for a preliminary and a final site plan. That's when we can make suggestions, not negotiate, but we can make suggestions in regards to some of the questions that the, the neighborhood, the, the folks of the township and the village have had. That's correct. On the preliminary, they'll go do their changes to it, then it comes back for a final. That's correct. And you have all the powers you have at that time with regards to landscape standards, parking. You know, they have to comply with everything else. That's, uh, Where does a master deed and bylaws fit into that? Uh, typically, that's, that's provided at, at final uh, site plan. If you want, you can request it at preliminary. Uh, but chances are at preliminary, it's usually a more of a, a boilerplate version just because they're very long. Now we touched a little bit on the we touched a little bit on the rental scenario. Thank you for bringing it up. I'd like a little bit more clarification on that. You know, today's age, they're putting entire subdivisions in for rentals. How do we protect uh, this from something like that happening? So it's not on the site plan. I do believe the applicant has stated that it will be owner occupied. So they can either put that in the agreement or note it on the site plan. And then that would be part of the review and approval. Now, technically, in a standard multifamily uh, development, we have no say in whether it's single, it's owner or rental. The applicant can 
you know, it's a decision. But we have an opportunity input to the master deed, correct? Correct. Uh, now we do, yes, because, because of the condition of rezoning. And because that's what they're proposing, they, 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 they are okay with it being owner-occupied and moving forward. Uh, if this was a standard development, it could switch at any time. I, I understand, I understand. But conditional with a master deed and bylaws, the council or the planning commission can suggest that this is truly owner occupied by means of the owner has to occupy the resident. They can't lease it. They can't, what about Airbnb? What about all the other things that we struggle with? Well, those, you know, once again, it's not a negotiation. So they would be beholden, well, they would be beholden. It would be a typical condominium document situation where the because condominium documents can get amended in theory if the condominium owners majority of them five years from now if it gets built mm -hmm. decided they want to change their master deed the village has no say in that at that point mm -hmm. because it's only they own they're the owners they represent the ownership so they get to do what they can but uh it's, it's you know it all depends on the kind of joe probably has details <coughs> Mr. Chair, so similar to the village rooms condos that you guys recently did in the last few years, um, you know, that was developed, they're, they're connected condos, right? They're multi-story. Um, they're uh, transferring over the, the final general common element portions of that to the association and then the association will absorb that in because the ones over in Ashley Way were already part of that association. So that was the last phase of that association. So again, the reason they do it in the, the condo setups now for subdivisions is Doing it the old flat act way is expensive right. and very long. So almost every subdivision you see go in nowadays, when you think, oh, it's a single family, <coughs> house, it's a site condo, mm -hmm. right? And that site condo meets the state, the, the law. They, they, each one of these homes would have to be on an individual lot to do it differently, individual platted lot, mm -hmm. right? And they can't do that because you know they can, but it's, it, nobody does it that way nowadays. So by going the condo, site condo, that already hems them in to some degree to the Michigan condo law. Michigan condo act. And we don't have, if someone right now could take their condo over here in Village Ridge Condos and say, you know what, I've lived in Florida for six months in the wintertime, and they could rent it out to somebody. We don't have any say of that. You could rent your house out if you go to Florida. We have, you know, the township has no say of it. So the difference here is if there was just a general multifamily development, those are typically done by people who look to maintain ownership and turn it into a revenue generator. This is more of a developer who's looking to develop it, sell them, and move on. Uh, Mr. Nixon, do you plan to do phases of development? Say, do three and then... No, we plan to do them all at once. All at once? What type of time frame are you looking for on this? From your perspective? For construction or for approvals? All. Uh, well, um, we only have so much time for due diligence for the for the property. So depending on what the recommendation is today, we may have to go back and ask for more time, but we would need to get through site plan approval um, probably by, uh, you know, within a couple meetings, August possibly, so that we can So you decide. have approval in October. Let's huh? talk real life. Oh, you have approval in October. October. Yeah, I think we could do the construction in a year. Okay. Go ahead. I'll just so, general, my notes. General question. Um, Brad, your confidence level in a year. Um, how many developments have you uh, completed in the past? What gives you that confidence level? So I've got uh, some smaller developments. I got. I have uh, <coughs> village. Um, I, I, you know, where our plan is, we would do this with a general contractor. Which, uh, one of my partners is one of the partners of Design House. That's why we have Design House Architect here. Mm -hmm. um, We've also uh, been uh, in discussion with a developer that's built um, a, a lot of these units. And so I, I'm highly confident that we can get this done in a year. This would be bigger than the other developments that I've done. Um, but if you look at some of the other things that I've done around the village, there's a home on Mechanic Street that I did. That was the first one, it was 34 Mechanic Street. It was one of the worst places in the village. And it's one of the nicest homes on the, on the street over there right now, in my opinion. Um, and then, uh, 
one of the other ones was the uh, Norris Bridal Building. You know, it was used to be A and A Flowers. It was pretty run down, and I tried to uh, rejuvenate it and, and make it a nice development. You know, s smaller than this, but um, nonetheless, uh, I, I think this is well within our scope. If you look at the scope of the projects that Design House has done, Design House has been a part of uh, many, many developments in many states and manage them all, help manage them all to successful um, completion. So, um, you know, the, uh, the partners of the uh, uh, development group is myself and Jeff, who also has a construction background, and um, Joe uh, Latoza, who is one of the partners at Design House. Okay. And, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. I think it's important, again, not only for the commission, sure. but others to hear and have a high level of confidence that in the event things move forward, uh, that they're not stuck with construction uh, for, for years. Unfortunately, we've seen that in other yeah, developments. Yeah, I'm sorry for you guys on that. I know which one you're talking about. Um, that's unfortunate. That's not our intent at all. We like to get in and get out. Uh, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to make a statement because of the timeline that you um, are talking about that uh, with regard to um, the site plan that you'll be bringing back to us, we're about to um, improve or enhance our landscape art, um, zoning mm -hmm. requirements. That's going to be coming up, um, and we're going to be applying a lot of those guidelines when you come back. So I'm suggesting that you make sure you understand what they are because they are about to change a little bit. Um, also, I want to just say that I personally think that I see a lot to like about this plan. Sure. But I uh, want to imagine myself living in these units and what that would be like. And from the standpoint of just quality of life, privacy, and all of the things that can be built in from the get-go, that's the kind of thing that I personally would like to see. And I just want to make a statement, since you are going to be churning it mm -hmm. kind of fast, if, if you get approval. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, why don't you guys sit down, please? So there was a couple hands here. Now, I'm going to put a caveat on this tonight because we have a long night ahead. If there's something new that you can add that wasn't already said during your public hearing, if there's some questions that you have, I'm not sure we're going to be able to answer all those tonight, but in a real short sense, if, you, if you'd like to come up and ask a question or say something very briefly that's new, that came out from our dis our discussion here. John, for the point of for, Go ahead. for the point of clarification, the question should be directed to whom? It, you you direct the questions to me. We don't have a dialogue in the room, and you'll have three minutes like we had before. <coughs> okay, if I got this right, Mark's lawyer, 196 minutes talking. If I got this right, if I took everything right, these two buildings right here are connected. If they don't connect these, they eliminate one of these buildings and put whatever they can. We don't even have to have this meeting because it doesn't even have to be zoned family or multifamily, mm -hmm. correct? No. 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 What do you mean, no? These are all single families. These no, right no, here, every one no, of them. These no. are connected to my understanding, and that's what makes them multifamily. No. Uh, just a minute. Just please, please, please. Let me. All your comments need to be directed to me. I have a question. How many single family units are in there that you're proposing? There's 32 units. There's four. There's, go ahead. Four, there's, each one of those buildings has four units in it. Each one of those buildings hosts four units. Four residents. These up here? Yes. 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 These are all four? Yes. yes. And what about these? Eight. Building five and six. The four plus four because they're side by side, correct? Yeah, they're the same building, just combined. Okay. Well, you might be. Well, you might want to ask the same question I'm going to ask. Well, Sam. all I know is I talked to this gentleman a couple weeks ago, and the story is not matching up to what you told me. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not sure where that's coming from. But well. Like I said, you give me a set of prints that showed what they were going to build. There was no building four on there. There was the three and there was the two. 
And my understanding, what you told me, since those two were connected, that's why they were making this a multi-family thing. Okay. Well, I, Mr. Chair, if I may, about three. Go ahead. Um, I know it's out of order normally. I don't have a different plan. I think that was the original plan, the only plan I've ever seen um, that we were given from the get-go. Uh, so I don't call any other plan. Is this one right here? I believe so. Well, yes. then I'll go home and I'll get the plans please, and bring them back to you and show you your yeah. call. Okay. So, and then um, the reason that they're being, I, when I say they have to be connected, I don't mean the buildings, I mean the units are connected. Any building that has more than one residential unit is multifamily. A duplex is kind of a, 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 on its own in a way, right? But a single family home is one unit and four walls, disconnected from another single family unit. Anytime that there's four of them in one building, that's multifamily. What I mean is that you may, it may uh, not clearly enough. The ones that are brought together, the units, because the units are connected together, that's why. Those four units in that one building are the reason why it's multifamily. Not necessarily that those two buildings were connected. Well, see, you told me different the other day. I said that one fourth building wasn't even on the prints that you showed me. I don't recall ever seeing another print. Well, well I like so I said, I'll go home and get it. Gentlemen, yes. gentlemen, yes. that's his discussion for another okay. time. I have a question. Would you go back to the other one? Now, I may have misunderstood. But were you talking about building five and building six? Maybe there should be some more separation in there. And that would bring um, this building this way farther. That's going to be in my backyard. The building. Since I live right next to you. Stop. Yeah, I know. At the poll order. It was discussed earlier. Mr. Nixon said that it can't go down and make it feasible to put all the all those buildings on that property. So I so for what Mr. Nixon said, that building, those two buildings, five and six will not be separated. Okay. Remain as proposed. Okay. So you're not moving this no. building down this way. As you see the, the drawings up there or the print up there, that's what's going that's presented tonight and that's what we'll be voting on tonight, whether we make a recommendation in favor or not in favor to go to the council. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I'll show this to Mario. Can you tell me what this is? That's the zoning Yeah, and what does it show as of the plan that you guys ratified in 2021? What does it show Washington Triangle as being zoned? The current zoning district is R1, yeah. Yeah, so, Although he said earlier that 2011 and 2016, when you guys did the future plan, it was zoned for multifamily. It was not. It was always single family until this past one in 2021. And we were not notified you guys would be doing a new plan or we would have came and spoken to you guys. Because it's very important for us to preserve our neighborhood. And thank you for bringing up the apartments things because we went to the meeting last Wednesday. We asked them. It's pretty expensive, and the economy is kind of fun right now. What happens if you don't sell them? And what was your answer if you couldn't sell them? We'd rent them out. So, just saying. That's what we're concerned about. If we would have known you guys were going to change it or have a meeting about the future plan, we would have been here to voice our opinion and to ask to become a single family. Thank you. Thank you. Mara, you put a future land use map up there, please. Yeah, just for a point of clarification, uh, what she showed is the current zoning. So we have the zoning districts right there, like you saw. Okay, I thought it was the future family. one. No, and then this is the future land use map that's a separate document in okay. the master plan. Okay. So that's the one that, that has it. Uh, R1. Yeah, because we, we always thought it was always R1, even on the future one we had saw it one time and said, why not have to find those documents too? Yeah, I mean, and it might have been, and it might have been before 2011, or maybe during the course of it, but... Because we re referenced it when we had the, oh, the meeting, okay. the meeting back in 2020, we actually referenced the, the future zoning map, and at that time it was R1, so... Thank just, you. Just because we were all messed when they said, oh no, the future is... Multi-family, we're like, when did that happen? 
the, the master plan in my mind is the road map. The future land use map is the road map. And before this meeting, I made sure that those things are in sync with the decision that can be made here tonight. If they're not, then we're, we're not abiding by our master plan and our future land use plan. We just didn't know it changed. It I understand. I understand. Is there anyone else? Well, we've had a rough night tonight. We've had a lot of discussion. I really appreciate you folks coming in. We have to get to a point where we have a motion tonight, whether we make a recommendation to the council to move forward with this or not a recommendation. So I entertain a, a motion from the from someone on the board, please. Uh, John, if I may, um, prior to uh, a motion being actually no, I rescind that that statement. Let's move forward with uh, preparing a motion. So again the motion again the motion tonight is to make a recommendation. No detail is is included in this. Uh, not like our sign ordinances. This is just a recommendation from this board to the next board, which is the council, whether they need to entertain or precede that. There is a lot of fences to jump over on this, but this is the first fence. I Go ahead. It, in consideration of the um, aforementioned fences, fences and the next steps in the formal process, what's been presented tonight, what has been discussed, um, what has been reviewed, what is subsequently defined and outlined in the uh, McKenna letter dated June 11th, 2024, I will make a motion to recommend approval of the conditional rezoning request to the village council of, uh, or the council of the uh, village of Oxford. I support it. It's so I have a motion on the floor and I have a support. Is there any discussions for the planning commissioners? Again, I'd like to make it very, very clear that this is a recommendation only. There are no, uh, goes or no goes there's no stops or stop uh, proceeds on this it goes to the council the council will make a determination at their level mm -hmm. uh, let's do a roll call vote please Asmer. approved schultz yes Pilot. yes Lynn. yes no yes motion passes now this motion go this package will go to the council the council will review it. Uh, Joe, excuse me, Mr. Medora, help me out. Kind of the same format with different faces up here? Yes. There will, uh, I don't know if there's a requirement for public hearing and the same notification and stuff that's already been established tonight. Just know that by stating that so in the approval tonight, we'll automatically send it to council. Yeah. Yeah. The, next Sec the second Tuesday of July. July 9th. July 9th. Thank you. I would like to entertain and invite you folks to come back for the pre-approval for the site plan. That's when a lot of thought can go into this, how this development will come about as recommendations. And then there'll be a final site plan uh, later on. Mr. Chair, as yes, a point sir. of clarification, let's not assume that the Village Council will approve. Correct. We have simply made a recommendation for approval. The Village Council then holds the final say on go forward. Just Thank as you. a point of clarification, in the event the Village Council does approve, there will be subsequent reviews here by the Planning Commission. We invite you back to um, engage in that dialogue and refine the development plans that have been presented tonight. We That's a hypothetical what if scenario. If, if it moves forward, we want to hear from you. Don't be strange. Uh, is, it, is there any, I'm going to open it up. Is there any more public comment tonight? Seeing none, uh, consultants and administration comments? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. We do have an agenda item regarding Excuse the me. landscaping ordinance. I neglected to hit old business. We have a re thank you for clarification, mm -hmm. point of order. We have a review of landscaping ordinance and draft amendments. I would like to suggest <coughs> that we wait till we have a full planning commission to review that. 
to move forward with that. We're two members short tonight. Um, may I ask a question before yes, we, uh, uh, we move on that? Uh, Mario, do we have a draft of the amended landscaping ordinance that can be reviewed? This evening? Uh, no, right now, no, because I don't have uh, a revision based on your latest comments. So okay. That can be prepared at any time, and if you'd like it ahead of time, we are normal back in. We can do that too. Okay. That'd be good. I would suggest that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. We do all yeah. three now? Yeah, so. yeah. I, just, I mean, if, if, the, if the commission decided, well, even in absence, let's engage because it has been months. It's been it's been it's a while. Been There's no we question moved about off that. Off the top dead center, and if there was something prepared, I would have entertained having a quick discussion. But since there isn't that answers and solves the agenda item question. Thank you. Uh, we just talked about public comment, consultants, administration comments. Mario, yeah, nothing else at this time. Fair people at the left side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, reports from the Township Planning Commission. Uh, Oxford Township uh, is working do diligently on their master plan, rewriting their master plan and working on their future land use maps, just like we talked about tonight. And uh, it's a major undertaking. We're working on that as, as best we can. Uh, ZBA, we have a report from ZBA? No, no means. Let's report. DDA. Chair's here. Mr. Chair, would you like, would you like to approach the, state your name. Please. Pete Schultz, the Oxford DBA chairman. Um, as we're heading into the summer months right now, everything, the activities are all starting. Uh, tonight was the second night of the line dancing over Washington Square. They had quite a few people signed up for that. Concerts in the park will be uh, Thursday night this week. Farmers Market starts in July. Um, that's when the, also the uh, courthole league will be starting going on everything. So there's a lot that's been going on downtown. So come on downtown and enjoy it. Uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks is the pub crawl between Oxford and Orion. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the shuttles running back and forth. And there's you know, quite an extensive list of um, establishments that will be traveling back and forth. So look forward to seeing everybody in town and enjoy the community. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Commissioner comments. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, mention that I filled out the Michigan Association of Planning sent out a survey on social equity and I filled it out and I recommend to my fellow commissioners that you take a stab at it and give your two cents worth so that the, this is a Wayne State University effort to survey what are planners thinking about these things and so they're, they're, they're really surveying planners but because we're a planning commission we kind of fall under that so um, I think the link went out to whatever your official email is and uh, so it's just a plug for that thank you that's it for me gentlemen good I just like to thank the the public for coming in and providing feedback tonight uh, don't be strangers come back for the other meetings and we go through if it, if it were to go forward in your particular cause, uh, come back and talk with us. Mr. Medor, Ms. Taylor, I have a, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we're adjourned at uh, 843.